We're sitting with my friend Mike Daly, producer, writer, artist, book writer, we're going to find out today, extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, Mike, how are you first? Well, how about you, Scott? Awesome, awesome. Tell me what projects you've been working on the past year or two. I know we've been, I've been following your career and there's so much to talk about. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez, the last, it's been the last busy last year or two. Uh, let's see, we got done producing the Grace Potter and Nocturnals record. Um, did a lot of work with my friend Mari Digby, whose record is coming out very soon. Um, the Georgia record for Atlantic, the Ambulance LTD record. You work with my friends uh, at Plain White Tees. Plain White Tees, that, That's course. a big one. Yes, I mean, yes, the Plain White Tees, Tom and the Boys, of course. Tell me a little bit about the Georgia deal structure. Was that a production model that you brought to the label, or did the label sign it traditionally, and then you started to make a record, or what was the process? The process with that was we got together and we did the recording beforehand. We didn't do a whole record. We did part of a record beforehand, brought it to Atlantic. Atlantic signed the band, but I was already attached to the band, so they signed the band, but I came on to produce the record. And we took, we used some of what we recorded before and recorded new things to do the record as well. Did Georgia have a base before you got involved with them? Yeah. And where was that? In the South, from Atlanta. So okay. they, had, they had a touring thing going on in the South, and we got together and did it. And, you know, with the way everything has changed, by the time you bring something to a label, it's got to be almost finished. For me, the first thing I look at is the songs. Regardless if somebody has ever played out of their bedroom or plays 200 dates a year. If you play a million dates a year and you don't have any songs, I'm probably not your guy. But for me, the best is the combination where somebody has great songs, have a unique point of view, and they have a touring base. It's hard to find, but they do exist. It's hard to find, but that's... It, it does exist, and that's what the great ones have. And, you know, it's funny. I, I've been doing interviews with uh, a lot of our friends, a lot of the, you mm -hmm. know, kind of uh, key players in the industry and the emerging players in the industry. And, and overwhelmingly, in the conversations, over and over, it's the songs. you got to have the songs. And yeah. that seems to be, you know, something that you... I know, because we've been friends for a long yeah. time, I know that's something that you... That is absolutely how you, <laughs> you see things. 100%. It, it only comes down to songs. Everything else, you can develop your fan base by touring, and you do need to tour. You can, you know, find the right guys in your band. You can do all that, but at the heart, it's the song, because songs are what connect with people. And in the end, you know, we're not making music for other people running around the music industry. You know, we're making music for the general public. And the general public, they just want great songs. I completely agree. Um, you know, I, I sat down with Mark Needham a mm -hmm. couple of episodes ago, and we talked about um, the, the importance of songs. He was saying a lot of what you're saying, a lot of what most great creative people are, would say, which is focus on the material. It, I, I come across, uh, having done A&R for almost 10 years, now running my own company, getting artists that are coming to me saying, hey, will you work with me? Will you, you know, help me somehow? And it seems like most bands, they want to skip certain steps. They want to get on mm -hmm. tour. They want to be on a record label. They want to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. But they don't have any of the material that's going to get them to where they want to be. So it's a lot of times I think, uh, you know, artists get confused with what their steps that they should be yeah. taking are. And they think that the, the way to the, you know, riches is to just take a fast track. And you can't do that, as we know. It, it, you have to have the material. You have to have the material. And, you know, I think that a lot of artists, it is confusing. I mean, on one hand, they're getting told by everybody, you have to tour and tour and tour and, and build up your fan base. And then, you know, they read some other thing that talks about, like, well, just, you know, blow up on MySpace and then, then it'll happen. And then another one's, and I think that, you know, it's very easy for artists and for bands to sort of get overwhelmed and try to do everything at once. But the reality is, if you have great songs and you play a show, that will build your bass faster than having really mediocre songs and playing a lot of shows. Absolutely. Having three great songs on MySpace or where, wherever is going to do a lot more for your career than having one or one million okay songs. Your background as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, can you walk uh, me through, even though I've heard it before? Now, <laughs> wa walk us through the the you know your story, and and you've had record deals. Yeah. Uh, you've you know you've been on that side of things, and now you're on this side of things. Can you maybe give a little insight into what that process was like for you, and and how things have changed with? 
sure. know, with the industry being in the state it's in. Um, my first record deal were back in uh, the late 90s with a band on Bar None Records. And then after that, I joined Whiskey Town, which was on Geffen at the time. And then after Geffen, uh, the next Whiskey Town record came out on Lost Highway, which was part of the universal structure. Um, not to bore everybody, but there's a big buyout in the industry. So Outpost, our old label, which was part of Geffen, went away. They closed that down. So then Lost Highway bought the record and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I went from sort of that side to the other side of the glass and went into producing and writing once Whiskey Town had run its course. And it's vastly different. I mean, the things that we were afforded at that point just because there was so much more money in the industry... I mean, our record budgets were, like, absurd compared to the record budgets now. And it was a different, it was just a different time in the industry. There was a different level of patience with things. And, you know, back then, if you did sign to a major label and you had a song that sounded like it could be on the radio, it would probably work out. They would just stick you out on tour, gun it at radio, and it might work for a couple records. I don't think that we're going to go back to the days of like where bands were like uh, social icons or, you know, I don't think we're going to go back to the days of like the Stones or the Beatles where like rock stars were like big, big, big. We're in the era of media, everybody's a star. You know, I mean, everybody has their YouTube. Everybody, you know, everybody has their 15 minutes. Their 90-second music show. Their 90-minute I mean, I mean, music <laughs> Let's talk about some of the records that you've been working on lately. Yeah. Obviously, we talked about Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, you had some cuts on Plain White Tees. Do you want to talk about yeah. how you get in the mix for a record like the Plain White Tees? And, and I, I've known those guys, you know, for seven years. I've yeah. seen them do the fairy tale, grassroots, organic mm -hmm. build. How does a guy like you hook up with a band like that? And, you know, is that kind of the poster child for what you look for in a, in a, a major label artist anyway or an indie label artist where they've built this loyal fan base and they just need that one or two hits. You know, the Plain White Tee, I love those guys. I love Tom. They're, they're really sweet guys. But they went out there. They slugged it out on the road. Tom is a really, really great songwriter. And, you know, they sold like 60,000 copies of their indie record through Fearless Records. So when I get contacted about something and it's like, Oh, they have really good songs. Oh, they have that touring base. Oh, they've sold a bunch of records. Like, that's all great. And the biggest part of that is I really like the songs. The first song I'd ever heard by them was Hey There, Delilah. And I was like, this, is, this song's great. So in addition to being Uber producer, writer, all-around town guy, getting all the big names, all the big cuts, uh, you are now a book writer, I hear. It's true. Little it's, birdies tell me. I don't know if this is true. But. <laughs> the rumor mill. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. The book is called Time Flies When You're in a Coma. It's basically, uh, it's basically a self-help book based on all 80s heavy metal lyrics. Okay. So in your times of need, you can you know, turn to Ozzy and Dio to find the guidance you really want. Usually two of the names that I go to when I'm in the funk. Uh, you know, tell me the inspiration for the book and I, you know, this is, we've been friends for a long time and you told me this for the first time I think at my Christmas party a few weeks ago. Yes, so, it's true. Uh, but so, so tell me what was the genesis of the book and, and how did you say, hey, I'm a writer, a songwriter, so why can't I be a book writer? Well, the genesis of the book is, I, I literally was crossing Second Avenue in New York and I had this friend of mine who she had decided, it's a long story, but she decided to move to France, but then she kept delaying going and like, and you know, I quoted a Rush song to her. I said, you know, uh, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And she started cracking up and I said, yes, I did quote Rush to you. And I made a joke that, you know, I should do uh, a one a day calendar of all. That'd be great. Inspirational heavy metal quotes. And, um. Though some could argue Rush isn't actually metal, but that's for a different show. Hey, that's a different show. And, um, you know, from there, I, I got to be honest with you, it snowballed. And we did the book, and then I got an agent, and then I got a book deal for it. And, you know, 
it it's just sort of gone on and picked up life of its own. And where can people find the book? The book won't be out till November. Okay, November twenty fifth. So in in eight or nine or ten months, or if nine, someone wants months. to find the book, do we know? Is it? Are you focusing online? Or is it going to be traditional? Retail? No, it's going to be it's going to be all wide of release. It. It's going to be wide release. It's coming out on Penguin Books. Great. Um, so it will be bookstores online. Uh, there'll be a website for it, which will be time flies when you're in a coma. dot com. Um, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go, Daddy. Sorry, I was trying to see if I could get that. Um, yeah, I got them all locked up already. Uh, good, good. good. Um, <laughs> how do people find you? How, how, what uh, is the best way to get to Mike Daly, <laughs> King of All Media and Music? Uh, you know, how does that happen? Uh, the best way to, to get to me is to just contact somebody at Crush Management, which is uh, the website is Crush MM, which is Media Management. I just learned the other day what that meant. Uh, CrushMM.com, and you can just email Alex. At Crush or Jonathan at Crush, either way is fine. And, um, and and just so people understand, so we don't you don't get flooded with a bunch of information, mm. a bunch of music. Are you looking for? Do artists have to be signed to an indie or a major label? Are you looking for things that are maybe not signed to anything that you would want to work on on a production deal basis? Or how does that how does that typically work? It's just it's just got to be great. I mean, I know that that's sort of like probably not the most helpful answer, but if you're on an indie label and it's great, send it. If you're on a major and you're great, send it. If you're on no label and it's really great, send it. You never know where you're going to find that thing. Like when I first saw Georgia, I walked into the Oakwoods. They were staying at the Oakwoods and they played me one song and I was in. And that that's usually yeah. how it happens for yeah. creative guys like us, right? It was, I was like, okay, I'm in. Let's get to work. Let's do this. So I, I think that, you know, anybody, you know, I, I would say don't sort of maybe send an avalanche of MP3s. If, you know, if you contact them, they can send you a link or send me a link or, or whatever. But I think that there's, uh, there's no criteria like, I don't want to see your touring schedule. I, you know, like that stuff doesn't matter. As long as the music is really good, everything else can be figured out. There you have it. Everything else can be figured out. Mike Daly, producer, writer, artist, extraordinaire, book writer. Got to look out for that one. <laughs> My friend, Mike Daly. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.